Hey, it's Dave with Quad City Safety. Electrical gloves, why do we wear them? So a lot of times we're, we're trying to make sure that we de-energize. So anytime we're working around electricity, we have two hazards. We have the ability to be shocked or we have or we put ourselves in a potential for an arc flash. So shock is what we're, we're here to talk about today. So basically what we do is we have an electrical glove. So this rubber glove basically paired with a protector. So we can use this glove if without the protector, but we can, after we use it once, theoretically we need to take that out and have it recert, or recertified or tested. And you send that into a lab to have that done. But when we pair it together, we have a system here where we're able to go into potentially energized. We want to de-energize everything if we can, but if we're in a situation where we can't or we don't know, and we have that potential for shock, we need to want to, we want to make sure that we wear a system, which again is our protector and our rubber glove that basically insulates from shock. So you have electrical gloves, okay? So when we sit there and talk about it, you don't just buy them, set it, and forget it. It's something that has you need to have a program uh, situated around it. And the biggest part of that uh, program is making sure that, you know, as we look at it, the first thing that always is going to have is it's always going to have a test stamp here. So you're going to see a date. And that date really is uh, a big deal because when we test this glove, the date that we test it, we only can put it into service up to one year. And from the date that we place it into service, it can only be in service for up to six months. So again, we need we got some dates there that we need to log. Uh, so we need to, whether you do it on a spreadsheet or however you log that, you need to make sure that you are placing the gloves into service within a year of that testing date and then the date six months forward so let's say uh, for instance this is marked as uh, February 2020 so if we put it into service in October November December January February March April so in April, this guy has to come out of service and then needs to go back to a nail uh, certified lab so that they can do, number one, they do a visual inspection, and two, they basically make, they, they shock it to make sure that there's no imperfections in the gloves. Usually we're looking for pinholes. So again, that's another reason that we wear these leather outers to make sure that when we're working with wires, we don't just prematurely put a pinhole in them. So if you have a glove uh, program, one of the things that you always have to remember is that we have to take these guys in and out of service. And realistically, if you have a program, I think the, that the best practice is for each person who has their gloves, obviously on a daily basis, they need to take them and roll them down and kind of look for the pinholes. So we're trying to make sure that we inflate that, or you can buy a glove inflator. So we get through that inspection, followed by the fact that we know that we need to have these guys tested every six months. But from a management standpoint, the biggest problem is unless you physically go up and look at this date, or you make sure that you're controlling the spreadsheet, you don't really have a visual. So we like to uh, promote the fact that we do different colors. So when we talk about these guys, uh, obviously these are orange but you can get the same ratings of gloves in multiple colors, whether that be black, yellow, orange, but making sure that we give something that's very visual. So as we're trying to manage safety, we can visually look in there and go, okay, we're in the second six months of the year, it's July, and let's say that our orange is our January uh, to June glove, and all of a sudden you're wearing this guy in July, we have a visual way to go, that's not and should not be in service, and take it out and get it inspected. 